we've had one for over 10 years, uh, and we uh, use it mainly for uh, educational uh, purposes, and uh, both for our students as well as for the general public. Uh, when we have an event like we had today, it's nice to be actually uh, to be able to see it in sort of concrete terms of uh, the ground shaking itself. Well, this was the largest that I've actually felt uh, uh, since the seismograph has actually been uh, established at the University of Rochester. Um, we have felt other earthquakes and of course we see uh, large earthquakes from around the world all the time, some of them that are actually portrayed in the background here. Uh, but in terms of earthquakes that are felt in Rochester, this has been the largest. My office is on the bridge between the Hutchinson Highland buildings, so um, I felt quite a bit of, of shaking. It was uh, similar to some earthquakes that have been in, in California that had magnitudes between four and six. We don't really expect uh, this type of damage in this region. and. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, damage is a function of not just the strength of the earthquake, but of building materials. So even an earthquake like this, uh, of, of this magnitude, if it were some pl other part of the world where the building construction was very different, for example, uh, houses made of adobe, uh, there could have been some uh, significant damage with it. But in general, in places uh, in the US, we don't really expect there to be damage unless we have magnitude of above six or so. There have been a lot of questions, uh, and again, I think uh, it's all the, the combination of, of things that we're dealing with a, a relatively strong earthquake for this region. Um, it's relatively shallow, uh, so we basically will get a lot of energy uh, propagating. The other thing that's kind of interesting about living in, in New York is that the crust isn't really broken up as much as, let's say, in California. So when we have a magnitude 5, magnitude 5.5 type earthquake, the energy propagates quite efficiently. So we expect there to, uh, we can actually see a lot of the shaking associated with, with the region. The Richter scale itself is set up so that um, seismographs all around the world are going to record the same number. That's the only way a scale would be useful. So for example, if we kind of look at this earthquake uh, trace itself, these are three components of the um, seismometer being recorded north, south, up, down, and up, down, and uh, east, west. What we can see is, in fact, um, a lot of energy, everything all compressed uh, together. And this is telling us that we're dealing with a strong earthquake, and it's relatively close to us. If this earthquake had been very far away, it would have been actually stretched out quite a bit. Now, in, in that scale itself, uh, a magnitude 5, magnitude 6, magnitude 4, uh, there's a lot of energy in between those scales. It's a logarithmic scale, and there's actually factors of 30 in between um, each one of these um, numbers. So uh, there's a huge amount of energy difference between a magnitude 5 and a magnitude 6. So uh, we still would have to, if, to get appreciable damage, have a much more uh, strong earthquake um, uh, in the region. Um, in terms of the largest earthquakes we record, of course, we record earthquakes from all around the world. And a really, truly great earthquake, for example, in California and the, uh, other parts of the Pacific region, we'll actually see ringing on many of these traces. Uh, continues for a very long time. It has a very different character than this type of earthquake.